Hi guys, I'm Shay with CV Farms. Welcome to Amazing Food and Drink. In this video, we're going to explore how we produce our grass-fed, grass-finished beef and our pasture-raised chicken. We're going to take you through all the steps of the process from the production right through to the cooking. We're going to show you how we produce our beef and chicken in an environmentally friendly way that's not only good for the environment, good for the animal, but good for us as we eat the product. And Susan's going to cook up two delicious easy recipes that we can use at home to highlight the quality and just show how good and nutritious our food is. So with that, let's go. So we're in here in our uh, chick brooder. So I uh, got these chicks this morning. Um, so we get them and we put them into a brooder two different breeds to see what breed um, is better for our system. We have a hundred chicks on each side and we'll do that every two weeks. The chicks are in here for three weeks and they come to us as I said a day old. So this is all insulated panels in here. Um, they have access to fresh feeding water at all times. We have our heat lights as you can see behind me. So what will happen is the chicks come in here they go under the heat light to get their body temperature up to that kind of 30 degrees. And then once they get warmed up, they'll go explore, they'll find the water, they'll find the feed. In three weeks time, they'll be ready for the, for the field and ready for exploring out in, in, in the pasture behind the cows. So we've had a look at these guys here. We will go out now and have a look at the chickens in the field at uh, three or four weeks old. So this is the next step in our chicken operation. These chickens behind me are uh, four weeks old. So we'll take a walk down and have a look at them. Uh, they're totally pasture raised. They're moved to the fresh grass every single day, twice a day. And they're fed a very simple, non-medicated feed ration. We're trying to ensure that they're healthy all their lives and that the end product is nutritious and delicious. So this is our process that we do twice a day for two reasons. The whole idea is to keep the chickens moving on fresh grass at all times. It keeps them away from their feces and any potential diseases or parasites that may be in it. Um, it's a very, very good thing for the grass, but I suppose like anything else, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So these chickens will be on our farm for at least 11 weeks. Compare that to uh, the vast majority of commercial production, which uh, has chickens ready for harvest from like 31 days. So the very fact that our chickens are allowed to grow slowly and more naturally is what not only increases the quality and the taste of the bird, it makes them much better for you as they have time to absorb the vitamin D from the sun and the phosphorus and the potassium from the grass and just, you know, ultimately live a healthier, happier life. So we have them in these shelters to basically keep them safe from foxes, badgers. So the, the uh, hardware cloth around the side and the chicken wire with the tarp over the top protects them from both terrestrial and airborne predators. So when they get a little bit bigger, uh, we do have like a poultry net that we can let them out and forage around the field. Um, but we do, this last year, have noticed a dramatic uptick in the, the amount of uh, birds of prey, buzzards, I think they're buzzards, and that's another reason why we move them at least twice a day to ensure they're always getting fresh grass, they're always on the move, they always have something to pick at and scratch at. Um, like if, if this wee guy was left out here and before I didn't put, didn't put him away, he, he wouldn't be here when we came back this afternoon. So it's kind of for their own safety. So as you can see, they do grow very fast. There's some difference in these birds at four weeks and the wee fluffy golf balls we saw there you know, a minute ago. This batch is about two weeks older than the previous one. So these are, these are birds that are nearly ready to go. Uh, they're about two weeks off harvest. So 
So these uh, are a French bird. They're called a Hubbard, and they're designed and bred to be a lot slower growing than the commercial chicken breeds. Uh, they're designed for being healthy outside, and they're designed to be also a, a supremely better tasting bird. You can see they're in here, they're scratching around, they're pecking at flowers, they're eating loads of grass. One thing you notice about our birds is they have a lovely yellow tinge to the skin. And the reason for that is the chlorophyll in the grass. A lot of people would think, oh, that's a corn-fed bird, but actually the proportion of corn in our grains quite, and it's quite low. It's the, it's the buttercups and it's the grass and it's the dock leaves and it's the chicory and it's the plantain that we plant. Our chicken, they're closer to a game bird, a pheasant than they are to a commercial indoor raised bird. It's a different product um, and, it, and it tastes like one as well. So you guys have been out in the field with Shay and um, seeing all the chickens out in the pasture, seeing how they're raised. And this is how our chicken then um, is sent to you. So you can order our chickens online. You can get them at the link below, so um, CB Farms website. So it will come um, vacuum packed just exactly like this. So I'm going to show you my favourite way to cook a full chicken, a whole chicken. That is really, really, really easy. So I'm going to demonstrate to you exactly how easy it is. So the chicken comes just like this in the box to your doorstep. So vacuum packed for freshness. So you can be sure that the chicken you're getting is always going to be as fresh as possible. The chickens are all processed and um, just ready to go in the oven apart from there's a little bit of packaging here just to soak up any, any juices. So make sure you remove that before you're putting your chicken into the oven. I am going to put salt and pepper on it and some butter. I'm going to put it in the oven upside down and we're going to leave it there for an hour and then we're going to turn it over and um, leave it for another hour turned over. I'm going to do the other side as well so I want it to be lovely and coated so you can even sort of press it in make sure you've got a really good coating of salt and pepper on it. So again just coating being nice and liberal with the salt. Although the chicken takes a long time to cook I don't have to do much. Secret ingredient butter. Um, so as I said you can use unsalted but um, we do use salted butter so I'm going to place it into the dish upside down for the first hour. So that is our chicken ready to go in the oven and I said we just let the chicken do the talking. So salt, pepper, butter in the oven for an hour. Then I'm going to flip it over, add some more butter and um, another 45 to 50 minutes um, the right way around. And that just really helps to keep in all the moisture but we don't want to, we just especially don't want the breast, the chicken breast to um, dry out. So that's why we start it off upside down and then we will turn it over. So we've just seen how we produce our pasture raised poultry. Um, so now we're standing here uh, with our grass finished beef herd. We operate a system here using regenerative agriculture, which encompasses many, many factors. But the two of the most uh, kind of prominent things are we're using mob grazing, like the chickens. The cows are moved every single day to a fresh paddock, keeping them away from their manure and parasites, and they're always getting fresh, nutrient dense good quality grass. We make sure the cows eat a third of the grass, they tramp a third of the grass, and they leave a third of the grass standing. And the reason for that is the top third of the grass is the most nutrient dense, high quality part of the plant. And as we move further and further down the plant, it becomes less nutritious. So my objective here is to keep roots growing down as deep as possible. This grass is put on the surface which means there's a good cover on the ground. And this does a number of things. It acts as a sponge. So during dry periods of weather, it acts as a sponge and holds water. So what do we get then in return for this kind of method of farming? It is better quality food. It is better production over the years when we don't add any fertilizers or sprays or any kind of artificial inputs. It gives the soil a chance to heal. We breed cows very, very specifically. We want 
a smaller to medium framed animal, something that will survive and thrive on a completely grass based diet. So these are our calves. We use uh, Angus and Beefmaster. Beefmaster is a breed of cattle that I introduced here from the States. Uh, they are designed to survive and thrive on poor quality ground and poor quality grass in South Texas. So never any inputs, never any grain, no supplement figuring. The only thing they get is an organic seaweed mineral and, uh, and rock salt. They get rock salt uh, and, and seaweed mineral and that's it, and the grass and water. So this is our completely grass-fed, grass-finished Angus Beefmaster Cross Bullock. Again with the chickens that we saw earlier, our focus here is to ensure that the cow can express her natural instincts, her natural, be in her natural environment. Everything is designed to make sure that she's happy, healthy, and as a result then, uh, we can harvest some delicious beef. So we have here um, some of our lovely grass-fed, grass-finished beef mince. With the grass-fed, grass-finished beef today, I'm going to make a simple cottage pie. A beef, again, can be ordered online at the link below um, from CDB Farms website and will come in a vacuum pack um, sealed for freshness um, straight to your door. So that's the way um, it comes. So we're going to put onions and garlic and carrots into our mince and then um, the potatoes for the top. All right, so two small onions in. So we're pairing the beef with as many vegetables as we can, really. Um, I'm keeping this really simple, and sometimes in families, you want to keep it really simple so that youngsters will eat the vegetables. Um, but garlic is a fantastic probiotic to have um, along with your beef. So to go on top of the meat in the shepherd's pie, we're just going to mash potatoes. So lovely in-season organic uh, potatoes and I'm just going to peel them so that I can uh, boil them quickly and mash it to go into the, or to go on top of the lovely shepherd's pie. I'll chop these into nice smaller chunks so they cook nice and quick and put them on to boil and whenever they're soft enough to mash um, then we'll I'll mash them for the top of the pie. So what we did is about an hour into cooking I turned it over, added a little bit more butter and also basted so this it so it's really great to baste the chicken and make sure that you're keeping it lovely and um, moist. So what you're looking for is anything over 75 degrees and that means your chicken's cooked. You want to push it into a few different places and um, making sure you're nice and close to the bone and um, to get the different temperatures. This one is coming up 79 so we're well cooked and then let it rest. It's important to let the chicken rest and um, uh, whenever we let it rest, then we can carve it and um, it will be lovely. We're ready to brown off the onions and the garlic. Extra virgin olive oil is uh, my favourite to cook with. Um, or you can use um, avocado oil is also um, nice and healthy to cook with so adding in the onion so when the onion is um, starting to really soften and actually brown then we'll add in a little bit of garlic I also have the oven on to preheat so that it will be at the right temperature whenever the the pie is ready to go in the onion will continue to cook whenever we add the mince, so I'm just going to go ahead and add the beef. So we're going to add it all in at once. What we want to do is we want to break it up. So just, this is an ideal kind of wooden spatula to 
just separate it all out and continue to break it up so that the mince doesn't cook in big clumps. Um, so I'm just cutting up the potatoes into nice little cubes, hopefully of even size. If you put them into the boiling water, then it tends to come to the boil nice and quick and you don't want too much water again um, you don't want too much water and um, because it will um, take longer to come to the boil so just make them nice, nice and covered with the lid and off they go so I'm going to add the salt and pepper so that's the carrots in and we're going to continue to fry this off and um, I'm going to put a lid on it to just keep in all the juices and to speed up the cooking of the carrots I actually decided as well to add a little bit of rosemary, so I love rosemary with beef. I'm just gonna cover it for a little while um, just to help the carrots to cook nice and quick. Lots of butter, some milk, so when the potatoes are all mashed um, it looks lovely and creamy and that's ready then to go on top of the pie. The carrots are well cooked now so into the dish it goes. So just putting the pie together, I have the mince in the dish and just need to add the potato to the top. So it's easiest just to spin it on nice and gently and then we can cover it with toppings of choice. So on the top, our favourite is cheese, lots and lots and lots of cheese. So pop the cheese on, there we are, and then I've chosen some nice tomatoes which are in season um, just to pop on top as well. So that's our cottage pie ready to go in the oven. So we're going to just bake it in the oven so that the cheese can melt and go lovely and crispy. And also the top of the potato will go nice and crispy. So it's going in the oven at about 180 degrees for about 15 minutes, so not long at all. So our chicken is now ready to carve and it's cooled well, which is now, it makes it a lot easier to carve if it's, um, if it's a little bit cooler, but of course you can carve it. Um, the dark meat of our chickens can be darker than other chicken, um, sometimes more like, similar to turkey, um, and it's simply because the muscles are used more because they're outdoors. I will not throw away the bones. So the bones are absolutely the most important bit, I think. The other thing as well is because of the really fantastic diet that the chickens get and because they're outdoors roaming around, you know, there's no, and there's no antibiotics in it, so we know that only good is coming out of this chicken. So it's ready, lovely and crispy on the top. Just 15 minutes in the oven and we're done. And yeah, enjoy. Thanks for watching Amazing Food and Drink. Hope you enjoyed your tour around CV Farms today and learned something new. If you've had any of our products before, drop a comment in the comment section or if you want to try them, you can check the link in the description and try them for yourself. We deliver all over the UK and Ireland. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you again in the next one.